I'm Andy. And I'm Matt. And I'm Ke I, Who are you? Um, yeah, this is a bit of a weird one, this one, isn't it? <laughs> I'm Matt from Spectacular Short Round. Okay, and I'm Andy from Keyboard Warriors. And today we're here to do a Iron Man comparison. A lot of you liked the Thor comparison that we recently did for the Thor Gladiator version, which uh, Matt now owns. It's now his Thor. And basically what we wanted to do is talk about the most recent Iron Man that Matt's got, which is the amazing Mark VI, and do a very, very similar comparison, you know, just talking about the differences in the armors, the perspectives. Um, also, this is me filming today, so I apologize for the possible seasickness for us not having Joe. So I'm going to try and do the best camera work I possibly can. Okay, so let's just pull back and you'll be able to see some blurry Iron Men that are now coming into focus. Um, these are both Hot Toys Mark VI Iron Men. Matt, talk me through this. Which is yours? So this one's the brand new Mark VI that came out about a month ago, I want to say. Yep. Um, he's all die cast. Um, as you can see, he's noticeably taller than the last incarnation of him. The one on the left. Andy, how old is that figure now? I can't remember. I'm going to hazard a guess at something along the lines of seven-ish years. Yeah, I would say seven. Um, seven. I, I, he was my third hot toy I ordered, but second hot toy I received. Back in the day when I was planning to have a mixed Avengers team and have no more than six hot toys. You remember that? And you remember the 88 on display video we did recently? Yeah, that plan didn't pan out. Together, did no, no. <laughs> didn't at all. And then I became an enabler and started getting other people to buy them. So yeah, that was a thing. Um, now, I actually feel that the Mark 7, sorry, the Mark 6 even, on the left holds up really well. I mean, don't get me wrong. It isn't as awesome as, you know, this clearly is. This is amazing and I absolutely love it and I'm a little bit jealous. But I'm surprised at how well it holds up in comparison. I mean, you were saying something similar, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Um, the, the thing where the, the new one shines is obviously the die cast. Yeah. It's a little bit taller in scale compared to the kind of previous run we had. But then again, as you were saying to me earlier, the, the scales have kind of been up and down, uh, with the Iron Man's especially, over the last kind of 10 years, maybe. Um, yeah, the, the, the plastic one doesn't shine as much, but I think it's as well, you, you get these bits of like weathering and things that you've got in, in him, and it doesn't have as much of it uh, on the, the old plastic one as well, so it looks a little bit more toyish by comparison, but definitely, I've seen a lot of people bashing on that figure compared to this one, and uh, the, 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 new, the old one, just stand the test of time. I will say, under the light, this looks far better than it does in real life, and I have to be super clear about that. The lights really do make the reflections and things like that shine to make it look less plasticky. Uh, one other thing I just want to point out, the height difference thing. I've deliberately got two stands because I know how much you all like to shout at me about oh the stand was a millimetre out or something like that. So to be super clear, these figures are this height because they've got two equal stands on there. I think the major proportion change um, is definitely in the head sculpt as well as the upper chest area. I think you can see the sort of thinner looking Iron Man head here, um, which I think was an evolution of some of the very early Iron Man figures that didn't really look like a person could fit in them. And then we move across to the die-cast version, which definitely looks like it could fit a head sculpt in there. Now, both of these head sculpts contain Tony Stark head, so I'm going to remove that one completely because I think the magnets have fell off my very old one and Matt, you're going to have to help me because I'm holding the camera. You have one job. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, so let's have a look. So, coming in close here. Now, the thing I will point out, apart from the ancient head sculpt that's in there, is you can move the jaw down on there, which you could, uh, you know, which actually happened in the movie. I don't think the Robert Downey likeness is bad. This is obviously like a cut down version of that Mark IV head sculpt that we actually quite like and does stand the test of time. Um, but, you know, it looks really tidy in that hair, in that helmet. It's really odd, so, you know, sort of proportion-wise. And then we move across to this guy here, who looks either like the modern workbench version, or alternatively, could be slightly based on the Civil War version. Now, the jaw doesn't move down on this one, 
um, but you can definitely see that it looks far more in proportion and like it should fit that character. I also really like what they've done with the hairline here. You can see like little strands of hair, yeah, like the you know, sort of, of there hair, kind of and there. Um, and whereas we go back to this guy, and it looks like he's had a buzz cut. Um, so yeah, bit bit odd, but obviously that's seven years of engineering for you, you know, which is exactly like um, they've sculpted a lot of Danny Junior faces in that time as well. So yeah think they'd nail it by that point so I mean absolutely have anyway um, with this the Civil War one so I th again I think it is a, a reissue of the Civil War head sculpt that they've tinkered with yeah I do I do think there's a good chance that that's the case so other major changes so lighting wise Matt you were telling me something about this earlier show show so, us what that is I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera here but I'm gonna just... zoom in so be prepared for some seasick action I'm just grab him so I can put a light on him there we go so He's got his chest arc, which I'm not really sure how well it shows up in no, the way. No, it'll show up super well. But there we it go. Is, it is really nice. The detail inside there with the kind of... Uh, it's not Palladium, is it? That's his old arc. What's the new one made out of? It's his new element he made. Yeah, that's it. Iron yeah. Man 2. And that's really nice. But the cool feature about this is, if we just lift him up slightly, he's got blue LEDs all under his ribcage as yeah. well. Um, and if you do kind of start angling him... You're kind of posing him up in like a hero pose and start showing that off, reflecting on that red armour. It looks really, really nice. Um, it accents quite well off all this uh, kind of metallic candy red that he's got on his torso. Um, that's the other thing that we mentioned about the torso as well, wasn't it, Andy? Where if you look on the old Iron Man from the left, he's actually got three abdominal sections that are all marked here. And on the new one, he's got kind of two and a half. Yeah. Um... Now you do have the extender in both of these, but the extender seems to work quite differently on yeah, this one. Yeah, it does. One. So, um, so you do have that. This one doesn't have the blue lights, but we do have that nice arc reactor going in there as well. And this just has some very, very basic light-up features. It, um, I think both of them come with alternative head sculpts as well that allows you to um, basically have the, you know, um, the lights on in the yeah, eyes like, as well. Like, like the Cylon head, isn't it, with the big yeah. kind of white light stripe across the, underneath the uh, the Iron Man face. Um, other major changes between the two, um, the shoulders have a really nice action on the Mark VI on this side. Um, just show us what they do, Matt. So, on here, if you've seen other Iron Man die casts and things before, you'll know that the joints in the shoulders for the armour paces are up here, on the actual body of the figure. On this one, they're not. They're actually jointed on the ball socket of the arm, so you can rotate that down lift the arm up and then rotate that back into place and close it and make it a little bit more seamless um, and I'm kind of probably making it look worse than it is from this angle but you can you can pose it and you can rotate this and it's also on a ball joint as well so you can kind of swivel it with this arm to try and accommodate it and close up some of this kibble that you expose um, under his arm. This one doesn't do that. This one has uh, just some very basic connections at the top. Um, you know, the arms and articulation are still decent on this one, but nothing in comparison to the newer one. Um, I would also say the other major difference uh, is the crotch area. And this, this, if I'm honest, is where I think the Mark VI on, you know, the original version kind of wins from an aesthetic point of view, from, you know, just the way it looks. Um, I definitely think that the modern one has a more functional, you know, sort of thing. But the thing I really noticed, and, and we can even see it on here. I'm just going to zoom right in. I apologise in advance for everybody who complains about that. But you see, they've put little lips on these flappy panels that are on the legs, which means you've got to put them back in the right order. Otherwise, it results in them, you know, standing out like that one I've just seen there from a distance. And you, they kind of drive you a bit mad, don't they, Matt? They're a bit annoying. Um, it's my main complaint about this figure, considering that, really, when they fall down, they should fall down in the places that they're supposed to be anyway. We don't need a little lip to try and kind of lock it into. So if you don't, and you misalign the front one opposed to the back one, then if you look here, like you see, you just get a little bit of a lip sticking out and it kind of destroys that illusion of smoothness. Absolutely, I really agree with you. Um, the other last major change I would say between them um, is to do with the shoulder panels. Now the older version has a section here that opens up and allows you to pull out two sort of rocket pods, whereas the one on this side has magnetics um, on the top of the shoulders. Just shows where the magnets pop so off, Matt. it's this panel here. You just literally lift this panel off. It's got a little magnet underneath 
and you re replace it with another one that you get in the box that's got the MAC missiles already deployed and it just falls straight in, there's no messing about with it, you can just interchange them. Uh, and he's even got a spare set of rocket pods that fold up as well out of his shoulder. Yeah. Um, that's very uh, reminiscent of the kind of new war machine type stuff that they're doing as well. Yeah, it, do, it does have the, that those extra pods in Avengers as well when he uh, drops down where Loki is yes. and pulls them all out. Now, so overall, comparing the two, it's obvious that the newer Mark VI wins overall, although the, the crotch looks a little bit more seamless on the, on the one on the left. Um, however, if you've got the one on the left, I mean, how much is this one retailing for, this new one on the right so hand? this cost me 360 three, £360. Oof. So he's not cheap, um, especially with the die-cast Iron Mans. I think they are kind of scaling up in price as time's yeah. getting on. Um, and you think, you know, retrospectively back, how much did that Mark VI cost you seven years ago? Um, I think it cost. A, I think I overpaid for it because it was out of print then, and I think it was near two hundred pounds. And it comes, you know, it comes with a very, very large base, very similar. Yours has the one from Avengers with the yeah. gantry. Um, have you got that just to hand? Uh -huh. I can literally um, just pan down and show you that. Pop that there, just right there. Me. You go. Comes with that, and the older version comes with like a, a grassy section that has like a broken up. Um, drone sort yeah, it does. of it's figure. It's from Iron Man 2, isn't it? Yeah. When he's fighting all the hammer drones, which yeah. is uh, ironic because the die-cast War Machine Mark 1 at the minute is through the roof in price. You're struggling to get one of those for less than £600 pounds, um, because Secret Base, in their infinite wisdom, had this guy on display but they were using the base from the die-cast War Machine and they were using two crotch grabbers back-to-back -back, and they put the War Machine back to back with this guy and it looked amazing and then as a consequence everyone's gone hell for leather on that now you can't get it for love nor money um, but at the time yeah they, they both came with the cool um, Iron Man 2 hammer drone bases it would have been nice maybe to get something like this for, for this guy given the fact that most of his accessories as well are geared towards Iron Man 2 yep absolutely so I'm not gonna we're not gonna do a full breakdown and comparison because it's essentially, I want to give you a quick snapshot of the comparisons to this more modern Iron Man, very similar to what we did with Thor recently. So we're going to move the Mark VI out and we're going to pull in another Iron Man for you to have a look, compare and contrast. So, on to the next Iron Man. Right, okay, so yeah, uh, another plastic Iron Man. We've actually got the black stealth one here. And the reason I've actually done this is purely because the black stealth Iron Man that we have, the Mark VII version, is relatively new, really. It's only a couple of years old, but they were still sort of producing this. Now, it is a repaint of this original red one here that we have the updated sculpt from over at 1.6 Kit. But I wanted to bring this one into shot just to show you size comparisons and things like that. Now, in the movie, um, the Mark VII in particular is a really big, bulky looking armour. Really quite barrel chested, it's quite the over the top. Are enhanced as well, make it look a lot more stocky than uh, this version as well. Yeah, this one over on the left has got the um, traditional shoulders over there. However, as you can see, the Mark VI here in proportion. Wise, um, it's a lot bigger than even this recent Mark 7 in plastic. So that is something you want to bear in mind comparatively if you are looking at purchasing sort of Iron Men to stand together. That this Mark 6 is going to be, you know, relatively out of scale with some of the older Iron Men when you're considering it. Now, the reason that we've got the two over on the left rather than the one is because neither of these are stock and I just wanted you to be able to see the large shoulders because we've actually added the python shoulders to the black stealth in the middle and you'll see that I've also added red cellophane um, to actually have the red arc reactor and red eyes on the stealth in the middle. Um, I do think though that having the black stealth next to this guy, you know, actually just sort of moving away from the traditional Mark 7, which makes it look more out of scale. We move this guy out of the way, and we just imagine the black stealth as a sleeker design. I don't think they've looked too bad together. What do you think, Matt? No, you can 100% get away with it because it's like the, the whole stealth suit nature of it. But, yeah, definitely, if you were putting the old traditional Mark 7 next to the new die-cast Mark 6, you're going to notice that scale discrepancy straight away. 
yeah, it's definitely something that's going to stand out. So I just wanted to highlight that to you guys, um, you know, considering, you know, that's a relatively new release, well after some of the diecasts were put out. And that would also be the same for the white Sub-Zero version as well, so that's something to consider. So, on to the next Iron Man. So, it's next Iron Man time, and on the left-hand side we have the Mark 42, which is sort of the, the first die-cast Iron Man, the original, uh, as it were, um, compared to the new Mark 6. So, Matt, what do you think? I'm a massive fan of that Mark 42. Um, that was my first Iron Man I actually ever owned. Um, I think it was actually the first Hot Toy I ever owned. You technically sold it to me with one of your videos back in the day. Um, so, I've got a lot of emotional attachment to this figure. So I kind of ground a lot of my um, kind of inspiration of things of how the Iron Man's are on that figure. Um, so with the plastic ones and things, I never I never got the original plastic Mark VI or the Mark VII or anything like that. Um, I only know from this guy onwards. Um, but yeah, what are you, what are you thinking? It, for me, it was the definite turning point. It was the point where you picked up an Iron Man and went, wow, that's an Iron Man. Um, I really like the 42, I like Iron Man 3 a lot, I know a lot of people don't, but I, I, I like, the, the suit for me has character, and it has quirks, and I think that's something to do with it being its prototype, you know, I, I think, I, you know, I feel quite attached to the design of it, um, I, I think that, that sort of individuality got removed when we got to Age of Ultron, and they went back to sort of the classic colours and it just became a suit then, it, it sort of lost its personality as it were, um, that, that it definitely had in you know, in Iron Man 3. Um, I, I really do like the colour scheme and, and the difference. I, I think proportionally looking at these, yes, it's a little bit shorter. Um, that's something to bear in mind. Yet yeah, again, I, I mean, I'm starting to think, looking at these consistently again and again and again, that maybe the Mark 6 is ever so slightly overscaled. Yeah. And, and that, that might be something to consider yet again when you're making your purchases and you're putting, you know, this in with your old school Avengers. That might that might be something we look at, just bringing a few old school Avengers in to have them next to each other just for a size yeah. comparison towards the end. Definitely uh, interesting to see how he stands up next to Thor and Cap, for example. Yeah, 100%. So imagine he outweighs them in size dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think that, you know, they can go together quite nicely and look, you know, nice in a collection. Um, the Both of these come with battle damage parts. So, um, you know, the Mark 42 has, like, shoulders and a chest piece and a face cover and all sorts of bits that come off and so does this one on the right hand side so we've got that as well um, overall quite decent figures I don't think they look out of place together so let's have a quick look at the next Iron Man okay so nearing the end Iron Man wise and we've got the Mark 45 which is the bug-eyed appearance from the Age of Ultron movie towards the end next to the new Mark 6 and the height difference is negligible in this it's maybe uh, you know sort of a millimeter or two not a great deal however the 45 has some really really nice detailing on it and has a really unique looking design in comparison to a lot of the other Iron Man figures um, particularly the head sculpt I'm just gonna zoom in on that just to show you what I mean uh, you know it's a very very different oh very cartoony over stylized almost like mangary I think this was their first punt at doing a bleeding edge armor design yeah and you definitely get that if you look across the arms and the legs where they've got like kind of the rippling muscle texture in them yeah it's uh, it's very much evokes the the bleeding edge armor which then they subsequently then redid for infinity war yeah definitely I mean, it's a really nice looking figure. I really do like the 45. I think the major quibble with this one from the design point of view is the shoulders. I think if you don't nail it with the shoulders, you get gaps. Like, you can see where I'm pulling the camera down deliberately to an angle where it looks awkward and you can see the gaps, you know, through the back of the armour. I think that's the major thing with this one. I mean, how, how do you feel about those, Matt? No, it's, it's definitely the case. Again, I think it's part of that kind of almost skin tight design that they've gone for. And they've purposely made the shoulders hug really close to the body. And if you start posing it and those shoulders move apart, you get a lot of exposed kind of underarm showing there. Um, and it ruins the illusion of the figure. 
definitely. So overall, yet again, for me and for my money, I would say that I like the 6 better, particularly that really cherry red is really standing out in comparison. Um, I would say that the, the red on the... You know, it's, it's looking like a basic red car paint under our lights. That's the best way of yeah, describing it. It's like Ferrari red. Yeah. And, and not Iron Man, that kind of, like you said, that candy, candied red that Iron Man has. Yeah. Um, in fact, he even calls it, he calls it Hot Rod Red, doesn't he? Yeah, something he, he like that. He that suit. Um, so there you go, height comparison between them two. Um, that's about it. So we're going to move on to the last major Iron Man that we're going to look at. We're going to have the Mark 46 versus the Mark 6. And our final, final Iron Man is the Mark 46, which I absolutely adore. It's my favourite currently of the Iron Man figures, and this is them next to each other. You'll see that the 46 is ever so slightly taller. It's not a great deal, but it is there. But he definitely looks like, you know, more of a bulky badass, and that's something that really stands out for me. Matt, how do you feel about these ones side by side? Because I know you own both of them yeah, as well. Yeah, the 46 for me was my holy grail. That was the one that I've been after for a while, and I, I love it. Um, I think it, it nails what the 45 doesn't nail. Um, especially in those that, that kind of shoulder joint situation there and again the 45 doesn't come with a head sculpt either of a Tony Stark portrait whereas the 46 came with that amazing new kind of battle damage Tony with the black eye um, I love both I'm still biased towards the 46 though if I'm honest I, I totally agree. Now, I, I think the, the thing that stands out to me as well is the gold is more gold. And that's really weird to say. I mean, you probably notice it looks far more reflective in the camera. I'm just going to actually move in, see if we can take some of the sheen off that light and make you all seasick again. There we go. Uh, I just feel that the gold is it's got like far more, you know, far deeper layers and there's lots of like blacks and, and shades in there, which is really cool. We're just moving over to the Mark VI. We, we've just got a very flat looking gold in comparison. So, I mean, out of all these Iron Men, and the majority that we've shown today have been mine, with the exception of the 6 and the 45, um, which do you have? Well, that's an interesting one because it really depends where your preference is and what other figures that you have. Um, I think what we're going to need to do to answer that final question is just pull some Avengers in to quickly show them next to um, that Mark VI before we talk about this final decision. Right, so as final thoughts about the old Mark VI and its scale, this is him next to the Avengers, um, guys. We've put them all on a similar stand. And as you can see, he's definitely, you know, way taller than Captain America. So this answers my final question about feeling that the Mark VI in particular is, is overscaled. I mean, if you're going to use this cap with him, you're probably going to want to whack some thigh extenders. Not thigh extenders, you're going to want to whack some leg extenders in there. That's definitely what you're going to want to do. And perhaps this Thor, you know, it's sort of not too bad. I don't think the height difference between him and Iron Man, but I still perhaps prefer Thor a little bit taller as well. Um... Today, after all these Iron Men, after everything that we've looked at, I think the the main thing that stood out to me is how much I absolutely adore that Mark 46. That is the that is the one that wins out for me. I think the Mark 6 is very good, and probably a close second in in all the Iron Man men that I've seen here. But I I definitely love the 46 as my preference. Well, how do you feel about yours, Matt? Absolutely, um, the six is lovely, and it is. A nice remastering of a classic whereas the 46 has got all the kind of modern stuff from a new Iron Man that we like and that the old one didn't really have um, now ab absolutely the 46 is the winner for me I, 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 don't, I don't don't get me wrong I love the mark 6 I think the mark 6 when it is being remastered is good but I think that they've used the mark 46 to kind of gauge the scale of it as well and I think that's where it kind of fails a little bit because as a consequence it made the Iron Man way taller than what it should be. Yeah, I agree with you completely. So, um, in conclusion, buy a Mark 46 if you can find one for a reasonable price. Uh, but good luck with that because we know that they're a bit hard to find at the moment. And that's exactly the same with most of these die-cast Iron Men. The real lesson is pre-order, guys. If you need one of these hot toys or you like one of them, 
pre-order at the point of them going up for pre-order and you know it's very rare that a hot toy won't sell on unless you're buying Electro from Spider-Man 2 yeah. which you need to look at your <laughs> life if you bought that figure anyway um, but overall I, I would say that I'm pleasantly surprised by the Mark 6 and having seen it for the first time today it's nice but it's also made me reflect on some of the other Iron Men and think well actually I quite like you know, even our original Mark VI a lot more than I thought I did. And it's amazing that when we've done, like the last two of these that we've done, it was the same with Thor. The Thor from the original movie held up a lot better than we thought it actually yeah, did. Still does. So, you know, overall, I think it's I think it's worked. I think it's I think they've done a good job on this Iron Man, but it's it's down to your preference and how much your wallet can go to. I don't see anything wrong with a new collector getting that original Mark VI and being happy with it. I'm Not at all. I'm still interested to see what they're going to do with that Mark IV, because that's the Mark IV is the next one on the schedule with the gantry. I bet you any money it's basically this figure with a few parts swapped out. Yeah. Because the Mark IV was pretty much that anyway. So that that's how I would, you know, expect it to be, you know, exactly so the same scale as this. We're going to expect another big, kind of, potentially slightly out of scale die cast. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, that's about all we've got to say on this. Um, Matt, where can they find you? Um, so, I'm the Spectacular Short Round. Um, I've only just recently started, about a month ago, so I might be quite kind of low down in terms of when you search for things, but search for my channel and you'll find me. Uh, I've got quite a few up. I've recently reviewed the Mark VI on his own anyway, um, and I'm probably going to do one for the Mark 46. As, as old as he is, he is a newer figure to me. So it'd be quite nice to uh, to kind of go over him. Yeah. So that's where you can find him, and you can also find a direct link in our description. We, I have about six reviews to fill with Joe. Everything from a knockoff Infinity Gauntlet, some crazy toys stuff, a kingpin from Toys Era or Toys Works or whatever they're calling themselves this week and some other figures as well so there's so much I've got to do and yet then Yondu's been released so he's gonna turn up next week as well so let us know what you think in the comments is this comparison thing something you like and want us to continue doing because there will definitely be one when Captain America comes around because I own them all uh, let us know what you think as I say and we'll catch you next